Ooh, World of Tank Blitzers. It's Littlefinger. Hey, doing a full tank review on this tier 7 Swedish Sver. This tank is the free, quote unquote, free tank that you can earn as part of the end of year rolling into 2022 Snow Globe event, which is right here. As you progress all the way up, you have to earn these light bulbs for each victory. You also get three light bulbs in the gold containers guaranteed. Um, and I think you had to average like 19 wins a day for the 22 day event. Um, and that seemed a little bit too daunting to me. As you can see, I have 49 wins left to go because I have spent a lot on these gold crates and have received 19, um, actually 21 snow globes to date. Uh, two were given to me by Wargaming. Thank you very much for that. Um, and so I've spent about mm, 60, 70,000 gold on this event all told. I did end up getting the Rampanzer and the LT-432, I believe it is, as new tanks, as well, as well as the Concept 1B. So, really great event going on right now, but we're here to talk about this tank. Interestingly enough, uh, these are the only two Tier 7 medium tanks that I have not yet aced. Um, so, let's go and talk about the setup real quick. We've got repair kit, multi purpose, and adrenaline provisions running the grilled salmon, the improved fuel, and the crisp bread there. 18, 10, and 7. Uh, might not need that much HE, probably could run a little bit more AP, but I don't think you're ever going to need that many rounds in a game, and I'll tell you why um, a little bit later, because the tank's got a little bit longer reload and does a good bit of alpha damage. Um, I am running calibrated shells, defense system, improved optics, enhanced gun lane drive. This is the one that I am mostly playing around with right now. Uh, you will get an additional 72 hit points if you go with improved assembly. I'm trying to see if we can get a few more bounces. The armor on this is um, is, is decent. It's not great for a medium, um, but it's not bad either. So uh, engine accelerator. I started out with vertical stabilizers and was just missing too many shots. Realized that, you know, I was more stationary shooting in this tank. Um, and I've changed over to the Ravine gun and I've had some good battles in it. So going to stick with that for now. Toolbox and consumable delivery system. All right, guys, we are on Blitz Stars. And uh, yeah, you can see just how closely the Sphere is to the Leo. Um, pulled up the P43 and the Panther 1 and the Dracula, which amazingly sold out in one day. 5,000 tanks on the NA server for 12,000 gold. Um, mind spinning on that one. But anyway, uh, I think it's interesting to compare these two. You've got 2,000 average damage right there with the Dracula um, in close proximity. 155 in pen. Like I said, it's a little bit on the low side, which is why we're running the calibrated. Uh, we've got 290 average damage, which is what I love about this tank. You don't have to be on target all the time, uh, like a Panther, you know, doing only 160. So that makes this tank um, a little bit on the unique side. We've got a pretty low shell velocity on this 105 millimeter gun. Um, but now we start getting into some differences between it and the Leo. Look at this aim time, 1.18 seconds and 10 degrees of gun depression. I mean, this blows all of these other tanks away. And the dispersion there at 0.38 um, is pretty high, which is why I think I'm maybe the refined gun is helping out a good bit. Now, the other big difference between it and the Leo, 55 kilometers per hour is your top speed. Uh, matching the P43 and the Panther. Um, and if you don't think 10 kilometers per hour is a big deal, you know, get yourself into a Dracula and you'll see the difference in speed um, with that compared to the Sphere and the Leo here. So this really makes the Sphere way more of a better tank, in my opinion, over the Leo. Um, that's pretty much it. 110 on the turret, 70 on the hull. Not a whole lot anywhere else to report. And we can take a look at that on Armor Inspector here. And um, if you're not familiar with Armor Inspector, please go check them out. Um, it's a one-time fee to join, and you get all of the data um, like this. 
looking at the tank here, uh, purple is spaced armor, and the darker the color uh, from light yellow to orange to red is uh, more armor, right? So our weak spot is going to be this front plate here. Um, you've got some nice angle at the very bottom of the tank, which is a little bit unique. Usually this is the weakest spot. Um, you can see 50 mil here, effective 200. And uh, on the side cheeks there, look at that 190, effective 80 on the cupola. Um, 110, and that number is going to increase on the rounded edges there. But when we want to go over to pen, and I think this is fairly new, and I started noticing some really strange uh, looking colors now on the um, this pen as far as green or red. Um, and if you take a look now at what um, this program is doing, it's showing you that you will ricochet right here, but you can still pen up the front. So it's showing it's showing this kind of as a reflection as a penable area. And uh, you know, to point that out here, if we do it this way, you can see that shot goes off the side. So this is a new feature. I've I haven't noticed it before. Um, and I thought that this was pretty interesting. So not a lot you can do here. Um, but like I said, because the tank has a, a longer reload and does more damage, you don't have to be on target as frequently. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, Black Goldville here. Let's look at the first battle in this tank. Um, <clears throat> got three heavies on each side. Got a medium and a light. They've got two mediums. So uh, you see that matching um, <clears throat> matchmaker balancing a little bit there. AMX looks like he's going on a spotting run up the middle, which is important for me here uh, to know that I don't want to poke too, too far. This is my decision zone here, um, but I'm seeing that my team is following me up here. So um, we have obviously gotten the spark was spotted by the, by the AMX there. So we're just going to sit here and wait pre-aimed and get our shot and move on back. And so right here off the bat, your peekaboo damage, um, you've got this nice gun instead of doing 160 and then backing out. And, and because of that, I knew I was going to take a shot from the spark there, but I wasn't I wasn't worried about trading it really too much as we sneak a nice one. And look at that, 291 here. Um, we're at tier 7. We've done 800 damage in three shots. And I'm keeping an eye on the minimap, and I've got my heavies with me. They are pushing, and so it's time to take this Vulcan out of the game. We get enough guns on him, and he has overextended, which is what I wanted to make sure that I didn't do. Um... You see a lot of their team there, uh, the Loza Sherman, the Annihilator, sitting out here in the open. Uh, we'll wake that Annihilator up for a little bit, but he goes back to sleep a little later, you'll see in this battle. Sitting out here in the open, not a great idea. We do have a little mound in front of us, um, and we're taking our shot, we're backing out behind it. SU-100, he just went for it, he has been taken out. Um, but yet, it's still a close battle, two on two. We bounce a shot off of that Hellcat and return a damage of 290 there. Um, so, this is what I'm really liking about this tank. You've got some armor. Uh, we've bounced 520 shots already. And you've got this good mobility and a nice gun doing a lot of damage for a medium tank. <clears throat> So I'm backing on down the hill here, um, making sure that I don't get shot crossing through this opening. We're going to go help support on the Annihilator. And I'm being really careful here. Uh, but eventually I think I realized that he's just not shooting because I was waiting for him to shoot at the Black Prince. He's not doing it. Um, so there we go. There's that nice aim time with the refined gun. I think I might have missed that in the past. Get a shot there into the Hellcat. We're to 2,800 damage. And uh, he 
tears my track off. We go spinning, and I'm knowing I'm over 3k damage here, and I'm pushing, uh, hoping to get another kill, um, hoping, you know, to get the ace mastery in this tank, um, and I get overly aggressive, and I forget to take cover here, and I push on into the Tankenstein, and he just backs up, and he says, um, yeah, see ya. We get triple tapped here. But we win the battle, nonetheless. 3,500 damage there. Um, and it just shows you how this tank can rack it up fast with a really nice gun on it. Um, 91,000 credits. No boosters turned on for that battle. Um, and that is a level 1 with 986 XP. 12 shots penned. Um, and really no supporting damage there, which is why we didn't get that ace. All right, guys, looks like Copperfield is our next battle. And looking that they've got some nice heavies, these two Annihilators, I'm, I'm kind of concerned that our heavies aren't going to be able to hold the upper line here. Um, so, yeah, this is probably a little bit of more of a risky move in, uh, <laughs> in, in taking a frontline stance against two Annihilators. Um, JP there, we're just gonna luckily get that shot to land 300 damage there. And so now I'm in a nice spot here where I can spot up their heavies and um, hopefully can bait a shot or two. And uh, as you saw there, bounce probably a shot off that annihilator that was shooting as he moved back. Now we've got him in a position where as soon as they pull forward, I can get my shot in and then I can back down to cover. And there's that shot, another 300 damage into the Annihilator. And uh, while he's waiting for me to poke back, we can come across here and we can look at the JP. I have to switch over to APCR to get one to go in the top there. And uh, getting a pretty good accuracy um, with the refined gun turned on. One of their Annihilators, surprisingly enough, went onto the other side of the map. So uh, we'll wake him up, get a nice little max roll there. And you can see here, you know, just the threat of me um, on those heavy tanks have now got the Annihilator moving around. Let's see if we can't get one more to go in. Yep. And now they've left the top, it appears, open for us to push around. Get the first one to go into the JP, meaning he is now a one-shot. Um, and all of their tanks, yep, confirmed, have pushed around. I'm okay trading shots there, but my shot goes a little bit high. That's the first shot that's not gone where I wanted it to. And unfortunately, it cost me an additional shot on the JP. But, um, you know, I was getting the kill shot and taking him out of the game. We've got the Emil here. We're going to get an HE shot. Spall liner turned on. So uh, really no benefit there to shooting that. We're going to take one more in here. Just trying to keep away from the Annihilator. Can we get one to go? Nope. The 40 TP gets taken down, and I don't want to get shot by the Annihilator, so we run off the hill to safety. And this is where our mobility comes in. We really haven't had a chance to talk too much about the mobility, um, but I'm able to climb back on up the hill and get here just in time to steal that kill. So, three kills, 2785 and damage. Um, and some decently accurate shots there. 78,000 credits, um, 953. So we're still sitting about that. That was only a level two. Uh, all right, guys. You know, I do like to try to include a game as bottom tier. And you can see some, uh, some big hitting tanks here. Two T-49s in the Chimera. So, I am I'm not going to rush uh, the middle. Um, especially not during 
event weeks, uh, especially you know when a lot of people are off of school and you get a lot of casual players. Um, I find my frustration adds up when uh, you know people don't do as I expect them to do, and so I find that if I can kind of get some of my allies in front of me, then I can better make decisions. Um, you saw kind of a little bit passive play as we went up to the uh, the mines there, the, the caves on Black Goldville. Um, and now we've got a really aggressive T49 here, so I'm just hitting adrenaline and getting a couple shots in. And uh, yeah, so he's taken out within the first middle of the battle. Um, great, great gameplay. And that's kind of, you know, what I'm talking about. Um, there's Predator, there's the IS. We know the Hornet here is um, on top of this hill. The Chimera's over there, so I don't think anyone is behind us. So I'm going to relocate onto the other side so that I have my tanks behind me. Um, and if anyone crests over that hill, hopefully I can get a little bit of support. But uh, T49 had the same idea, so. Uh, I'm gonna change tactics here and uh, just see if we can't get a shot, a quick shot into this T49. And as we come around, look at that, he's already run away. And the Tiger and everyone else on this team have appeared to a push in the, kind of our spawn area here. Tiger's changed his mind. He's coming back here. I know he is. Um, and I'm okay taking the shot because Right now, I'm on escape route mode here. Um, I don't want to face the Tiger 1v1. Um, so we'll get down and to safety on the other side of the hill where we wanted to begin, to begin with. Um, so, slow start to this game for sure. Um, and we'll see what we can do here with the Tiger. And there we go. There's the capability of getting a couple of those bounces um, probably off the side cheek. Tiger does manage to take out the T-49. Um, you know, that has a high-firing gun on that Tiger, and it'll chew you up, so um, don't take it lightly. And again, don't want to be in a position where I am potentially to be pushed upon. And I see the Hornet here going around, so we've got a couple tank advantage here, so I'm just going to be aggressive, go after him. He bounces um, that H or Hess shell, whichever he shot. Um, tried to see if we could pen there, but the uh, gets saved there by the like, and I think got the kill. And now that Tiger's come back around, we were trying to stay away from him, um, but now I have a couple tanks behind me, and I know I have support. Uh, so when he fires, I can pull forward, and I can put my shot in there and back up. Alright, so 2,100 damage. We still have two tanks left to go. And they are looking down into our spawn. So, this gets into that mobility of a nice medium tank. Here we go. Let me get up here and get the Chimera. But we're not looking where we're driving. We go up the hill too much. Can't get off the hill. Can we get reloaded in time? Sure enough, there's our second kill. Uh, 2200 damage there. So, slow start, quick finish there. Got some kills at the end and uh, managed to get 2000 damage, 47,000 uh, credits out of it. 939 on the XP there. And let's see why. Hmm. Not really much spotting um, assistant damage there, but again, I'm really liking this tank. Um, it's super solid, and for those of you that are free to play, uh, you can obviously get this by putting in enough battles a day, enough wins per day to get this tank for free. Um, so hopefully you got some ideas on how to play it, and if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, and as always guys, get educated, not fingered. A little finger, out.